discuss about the relation between refractive index and critical angle. Here we know that the refractive index is indicated with the letter N and the critical angle is indicated with the letter C. And here, this is the situation a light ray is traveling from one medium to another medium. Here, this is a denser medium and here this is a rarer medium N1 and N2. And this is the normal and this is the interface separating the two mediums. Now, the ray is traveling from optically denser medium to optically rarer medium and in rarer medium it is making an angle 90 degrees to the normal. So, angle R is equal to 90 degrees then whenever the angle R equal to 90 degrees then the angle of incidence I equal to critical angle. And now, let us see the relation between N and C with the help of Snell's law. We know that Snell's law is nothing but sin I by sin R is constant. Or uh, this, this is the another form of Snell's law that is N1 sin I is equal to N2 sin R. So here, we can write this as N1 sin here I is nothing but critical angle C. So, N1 sin C equal to N2 sin. Here R is nothing but R equal to 90 degrees. So, sin 90. Or we can write this as N1 by, if you bring N to this side, N1 by N2 equal to sin 90 degrees by sin C. Or this can be written as N12 that means refractive index of medium 1 relative to medium 2. So N12 is equal to sin 90 value is 1 so 1 by sin C and if I consider that this is the refractive index N2 the medium 2 is air then the refractive index will be equal to 1. That means this can be written as N1 by 1 as N2 value is 1. So that is equal to 1 by sin C. Now there is no matter of N1 and N2. So simply we can write it as refractive index N. So N equal to 1 by sin C. So this is the relation between refractive index and critical angle that is n equal to 1 by sin c where n is the refractive index and c is the critical angle. So directly we have taken n here if there is two medium means we will consider that n1 and n2 here uh, already we know the second medium here we are considering that as air so this we can consider as n so the relation is n equal to 1 by sin c. Let us see the total internal reflection and critical angle. Here uh, there are two mediums. This is a denser medium and this is a rarer medium. And this is a source of light which is traveling from denser medium. So initially if you consider a ray traveling from optically denser to rarer, we know that when a light ray is traveling from optically denser to rarer, it will bend away from the normal. So this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of refraction and we know that when the ray is traveling from denser to rarer the angle of incidence will be less than angle of refraction. The reason is it is bending away from the normal so angle R will be greater than angle I. And now if you consider a second ray, see this ray is also traveling from optically denser to rarer so this will be the angle of incidence I and this will be the angle of refraction R and here angle of refraction R is making some 90 degrees with the normal as it is a normal it is a normal and it is a normal so if the angle of refraction is making a 90 degrees with the normal then this angle I will be equal to C that we call as critical angle that means the ray should travel from 
denser to rarer and in rarer medium at the interface it have to make 90 degrees to the normal then the angle of incidence is called as critical angle if the refracted ray makes an angle 90 degrees to the normal then the incident ray is called as critical angle and now if you consider here this is a third ray from the source it is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium but here it is not uh, refracting to the rarer medium it is coming back again into the denser medium so here there is no refraction here no refraction takes place the ray is again coming back into the denser medium here this is the angle of incidence and this is called the angle of reflection it is coming back again into the denser medium uh, hence we call the situation as total internal reflection the reflection is completely internally the reflection takes place so this is called as total internal reflection and for total internal reflection there are uh, some conditions you have to follow some conditions for the uh, for uh, TIR total internal reflection so the conditions are the light ray should travel from optically denser to rarer the ray have to travel from optically denser to rarer medium and the angle of incidence should be the angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle the angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle then only this TIR will take place total internal reflection takes place when the light ray is traveling from optically denser to optically rarer medium and the angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle see here if you observe the two rays here the angle of uh, this incident ray is greater than this incident ray that means here already we have discussed that angle i is nothing but equal to c critical angle that means this is the critical angle and this incident angle is greater than the critical angle so if these two conditions have done then only the total internal reflection takes place and coming to critical angle when we will say that critical angle the refracted ray should make 90 degrees to the normal in the rarer medium then the angle of incidence in denser medium will called as critical angle so this is about total and total internal reflection and critical angle and in before we have discussed the relation between refractive index and critical angle the relation between refractive index and critical angle is n equal to 1 by sin c